Hello guys, welcome to the part 3 of Solution Thermodynamics video, video series and as we have discussed earlier in the part 1 and part 2, we will move on to now the solution, okay. So let's consider a closed system, okay. This is an open system, let's close it, okay. And here in it, we have let's say uh, n number of various, okay. So we have one compound, two compound, three and so on till i, ith compounds, okay, many compounds and it is a solution okay and it has a particular temperature or pressure okay so the gibbs energy for this system the gibbs energy for this system the total gibbs energy gt as we have written mt as the total property so gt is the total gibbs energy of this closed system is actually varying with it is a function of it is a function of what the temperature the pressure and the various moles of various compounds till n3 n i okay so what we can infer from it is that the gives the total gives energy would change if the temperature pressure or the moles of any of these uh, compounds changes so hence we can write dgt is equal to we have earlier got that it was vdp minus sdt okay change in pressure change in temperature and we have to now add the change in compounds mole fractions too so that would be the summation of okay the change in this change in this this and this okay so this can be written as this can be written as uh, we should take the partial uh, partial differentiation of with ni uh, dgt by ni multiplied by dni okay and we should sum it up okay summation of this now why i have taken this thing is that now here this v is nothing but partial differentiation of gt dgt okay so del gt upon del p okay because d and d here so this is the partial differentiation keeping everything constant t constant and various n i constant and j constant okay other things are constant okay so hence we can say that the change here the del gt upon del n i should be there now what is this thing actually okay this is a, there is a summation here also okay because n i for n1 n2 n3 so we need to sum it up for all now what is this thing okay this was majorly we have seen it like del gt upon del ni we have seen that uh, del gt or we have actually seen del uh, the mt is the summation of the partial molar property okay the partial molar property and the change in the moles of i so if this is changing so this goes down we have seen del mt uh, dmt by dni as a uh, kind of mi bar okay so this actually suggests us this actually suggests us that this should be the partial gives molar energy okay this is the partial partial means g bar of ith okay of ith now what is this actually this we call it as mu okay mu i which is which is nothing but partial molar gives energy and this was given a special name as chemical potential okay this was given a chemi chemical potential name I will tell you why. So, what does this signifies? Chemical potential signifies now this del P signifies mechanical equilibrium. Okay, if del P is zero, then there is mechanical equilibrium. If del T is zero, then there is thermal equilibrium. And if this del N I is zero, then we can have a chemical equilibrium. So, this mu I is chemical potential. Suppose there are two systems and they have different chemical potentials. Okay, so in that way we can identify how much movement can take place between the two okay if they come together so chemical potential gives us an identification of what's the potential of the solution is as per the number of moles present okay so this is chemical potential and now we will look forward to it as g d g t is equal to uh let's take it as let's take it as dg okay and the n n actually uh, g t is n into m m uh, here is g so if we put down this n, then obviously, obviously this should be actually VT and this should be SD, I guess. Yes, the total. We are talking about the total. Okay. So when we take the molar property, then it will becomes VDP minus SDT and plus summation of summation of mu i into D N i upon n. So this will become mole fraction, n i upon n mole fraction. Okay. We have done just nothing that, that GT is G into n. We have seen it in the last part. And we have just divided by n to get g here instead of g. Now the next thing is 
uh, phase equilibrium we should know about the phase equilibrium to get more about more knowledge about this new i that is chemical potential so let's talk about that okay let's talk about the phase equilibrium okay so let us consider a system like this let's consider a system where there are two phases obviously we are talking about phase equilibrium or phase equilibria equilibria okay so there should be two phases let's say alpha phase and beta phase now alpha can be liquid and beta can be vapor okay any two phases and there is let's take uh, two okay let's take two compounds here in this phase and two the same here also so here the compound one will have we will be denoted as moles n1 times beta okay let me write it here you will understand that okay so it is a closed system so total number of moles of one is so moles of one and total no need to write this t actually but i'm just signifying that it is total will be nothing but in the first phase n1 alpha and in the second phase n1 beta okay now next thing what we need to say here is this is a closed system no moles will come no moles will go out of the system so the if we differentiate it then this will be zero no change in moles and hence n1 alpha plus n1 beta they will also have change so the change in moles of one in the alpha phase is actually the negative of the change of moles of one in the beta phase okay if this is increasing this should decrease if this is increasing this should decrease okay then what we can say here is let's use the equation we got earlier dgt okay we got this one is equal to v uh, we should use this one right because here we have the moles not the dg1 if we use dg1 then we have the xi and we need to talk about the moles first okay so we will take this one in this equation v and let's take constant pressure okay let's take constant pressure and temperature so in that case this will become the summation of mu i into dni okay we have seen that and this dni and this summation will mean for two for two phases okay we need this for two phases and for that what we will do is okay so what we will do is for one phase we should take the gibbs energy okay so for one phase this will only be for one phase okay alpha and mu i think should also denote alpha and for the other phase for the other phase we have mu i beta dni beta okay and we should subtract them okay we should subtract them now it, it appears that we should subtract them so that this and this uh, it has a minus and it gets added up but but we let's let's see logically what is happening phase equilibria means that this is the boundary of the phase and if it is in equilibrium then mm, there is no more transport okay the phases have been in equilibrium now okay it has been in equilibrium so the overall potential has been nullified okay so the overall potential change has been nullified because the potential has reached a constant value and no more transfer or anything will take place so the delta g of the overall system overall should be equal to zero because it has been now at a constant value after get uh, reaching the phase equilibria okay and this means this means that dg alpha t plus dg alpha beta t should be zero okay because this overall gives energy is uh, actually the sum of the alpha phase and the beta phase so the overall gives energy should be now the dish is no change in it okay so we can add these two and we will finally get we will finally get summation of mu i okay uh, let's take one only okay for this simple case let's take one mu i alpha dn1 so that you don't get confused okay and we add this summation of mu i 1 beta dn1 beta okay and this should be equal to zero now let's see what happens okay let's see what happens okay so we also have this thing we also have got this thing and here if you see this and this so we can put minus of d n alpha or anything okay let's put that it is summation of mu 1 alpha d uh, d n 1 alpha minus summation it has become minus because we are putting here d n 1 alpha only okay that's why the minus thing that we have got here earlier okay and this is 1 and should be beta should be beta so we can take this common and this was equal to zero as we have seen here so we can take it common and what we will get here is that summation of now this thing cannot be equal to zero because the moles okay 
the moles will change okay let me show you how it should become this because if the mole is also not changing then this is thing uh, uh, okay we have got this okay so this thing should be equal to zero okay so this thing should be equal to zero and hence we finally found out that for the phase equilibrium for the phase equilibrium the summation of the chemical potential of all this was one we have many so we will write i any okay all the summation of all the compounds the chemical potential in alpha phase should be equal to the summation of chemical potentials of all the compounds in the beta phase so this will result in phase equilibria okay so now what we will do is we will see just one more thing okay uh, this was phase equilibria i hope you got it and we will see just one more thing that what will happen we have talked about the delta g we have found out chemical potential we have seen phase equilibrium now what will happen in a solution what will happen in a solution okay let's take a gas solution so we are taking a gas solution and what will happen to the fugacity okay so in a gas solution we can write the fugacity we denote the fugacity as uh, for let's say for pure we earlier have written for pure it is as fi okay for pure now for a solution for a solution we will write the fugacity as fi cap okay similarly for pure we have got the fugacity coefficient as phi i which is equal to fi upon p for the solution this will be written as phi i cap okay this cap this cap is if you look at this it was it is kind of similar like we put the partial molar property the bar so we for solution this was also for solution and here we put a cap here okay and this will be fi cap divided by now the pressure here it's a solution so we will take the partial pressure okay the partial pressure this is the denotation uh, and we will look into it further in the next part hope you like this video please like share and subscribe